Greetings. My name is David Williams, and I'm calling the meeting in order at 319 on um, November the 4th. Okay. Uh, it's 314. I'd like to officially call the APC November 2017 annual meeting to order and ask people to please oh, their phones again or stop talking. Okay. In the absence of a secretary, I'll do the roll call. Uh, Ray Baxter. Oh, Jim oh. Evans is excused. Kathy yeah. Jacobs is excused. Lee Lochner, no. please here. And David uh, Stewart's excused. Gabe Goldberg's excused. We yeah. have Bill James. Present. John Kennedy. You just He's here. Jerry Menick. He's here. Judy Taylor, Delora, yeah. you're here. And Sam, but not least, you're like me, Sam. You're at the end of the alphabet. Yeah, I'm here also. Okay. Here. Please mute your mic until you want to speak. <laughs> so we can get this done so we can hear you. Because even though this is an official meeting, so we need to make sure we can get a good recording. Francis can't add it out, people in the background. Okay. Um, as we approach the end of another year, APCUG is 30 this month. We'd like to look back at where we've been and where we need to go in the future. Several things we've accomplished this year. There have been four very successful video technical conferences, moving our hosted user group to a new and better service, an ever-expanding speakers bureau, and a website full of constantly changing information and new appeal. There are four more informational yeah. technology yeah. conferences planned for 2018. Uh, no, eight to 20. to check your web service for the date. There are also yeah. presence on Facebook and social media, and you'll be hearing more details uh, about what APC did in 2017 and the presentations coming up. We look forward to working with our groups to help them uh, the groups. APC offers many benefits and they're updated often. Need a speaker's bureau for a meeting? Check out the YouTube videos or speakers. Got a topic you're interested in? Let us know. Uh, if UPG can help you or your group in any way, please free to contact your regional advisor or anyone else on the board. Our email addresses are on the website at www.apcu2.org. Okay, now we get down to the official business. Is there a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes? I make the, Lee Lochner makes the motion to dispense with reading of the minutes. Do we have a second? Year. Do we have a second? Ray Baxter makes the second. Ray Baxter makes the second. We have a couple seconds. Thank you. Uh, Ray, can you please give your end of the year treasures report? Yes, I'm happy to start things off. Uh, this will be for the year 2016. Uh, we're always a, a little bit behind because our annual meetings are towards the end of the year. Uh, I'm going to do a comparison as to what we accomplished financially in 2016 compared to what we budgeted. Uh, we had a regional conference in 2016 in Las Vegas. We had planned to get a hopefully at least 100 attendees. Uh, we had something less than 70. So the net result was about, no, not about, was exactly $5,930 wow. of income. Uh, we also had membership dues of $8,050. So uh, that is down from previous years as groups continue to close and our membership goes down. So the total for the year of income was $14,019.58 and that includes the interest uh, that we get on our savings account and our CD. Uh, from the expense side, uh, we had two big expenses. Uh, I want to point out again that we do a budget every year and our budget uh, last year knew we were going to lose money, but we did want to have this face-to-face -face conference in Las Vegas at the same time we were doing our our, our uh, conference, and that worked out well. All of the advisors and directors got to meet our colleagues in person. So that uh, the, the conference itself, uh, the expenses amounted to $10,457.86. We only budgeted 8400 using the previous year's numbers that we had got from the Palace Station, but they went ahead and increased uh, their rates quite a bit, uh, knowing we'd be back the next year. Uh, the face-to-face -face meeting was uh, for the uh, 
advisors and directors who attended covering their transportation costs and their lodging costs uh, for the week uh, was $8,327.63. So, and we budgeted 8400 so that came in pretty darn close. All the other categories of our contract services, online hosting, daily operations, uh, advisor travel, et cetera, all came in below the budget. So the total number of uh, expenses was $27,533.34, which actually was under the total budget. But that still resulted in a loss of over $13,000. So, so at the end of 2016, uh, we had total in our, in our cash in all of our accounts of $113,211.04. Uh, amounts uh, that you know, were, were in previous years accumulated, we're now spending them. And uh, that's, so the, uh, and our, our now liability, uh, our total uh, equity is $108,994.85. Thank you, Ray. Uh, Lee Lofner will go, now give the membership and publications report. You got to unmute yourself, Lee. Lee. As of November uh, 1st, 2017, we have 161 active groups compared to the 172 groups we had a year ago. During this year, several groups combined into one whereas others had to disband due to the decline of age and the membership of members not stepping up to the plate to serve as officers. As several new groups joined APCUG in, APCUG in 2017. Reports are still being compiled and published uh, uh, every quarter at the APCUD uh, website. Thank and you, anyone Lee. can access them. Yeah. Thank you, Lee. Okay. Now we're going to Bill for the contest committee report. Thank you, Mr. Not President. our last visit with Bill, but. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Normally we have a internet, I'm sorry, a web photo and newsletter contest. And this year we did not have those three contests. Oh, thank you, Bill. Okay, uh, now I'm going to give the Kathy uh, Jake. Uh, you finished? Judy has a has a question. Will be, will we be having those next year in 2018? That will have to be a board decision, and that has not been made. Okay. Thank you, Bill. I'm sorry I jumped the gun. I got too many windows here to look at. Uh, I'm going to give Kathy Jacobs social media report as well as the marketing online reports. To do the social media report, I'm going to share my screen. And as I said, you'll, the, uh, you'll get thumbnails down the right-hand side, but as soon as I stop sharing my screen, everybody will be back to normal. Okay, hang on. You got to get big here. And it's not showing up, is it? I know what I did. Let's share the screen again. I shared I, the wrong screen. I could see it. Yeah, it, it was showing up. Oh, it was showing up? Yes. And David, it was showing up, but since you had it full screen, it was um, some of it didn't show up because of the thumbnails on the right hand side. Okay. There you go. I, I should, I'm looking at the wrong computer because I'm, I got three computers going here. Social media stats. Okay. Um, as you know, we've got several uh, different social media. Uh, the first is Facebook. And if you look at 
last year versus this year, on page followers, we had we increased, and page likes, we increased. I'm not sure that everybody's going to understand all this, but we only had one person that stopped following us in, uh, three, in the last three months, and only three over the full range. So we're, we're, we're moving up. If you happen to look at the stats from February to November, we've been, uh, this is people that have used our page, we've been up and down. As I said, uh, we could always use more. So we encourage you to publicize this to your members, to like us and to go out and look because we share lots of good information there that could be of uh, value to your members. Okay, reach, as I said, uh, we've done a good people of reaching out. These are people that haven't viewed the page, but have uh, at least reached and, and seen the, uh, the publications. And if you look at the peak in August, uh, that's when we did some advertising for uh, the last BTC. So we got a, lo a lot of people actually saw that. Um, so then we back down, but we're not doing too bad, but we still need to reach a whole lot more people. So you need to make sure that you join us. Okay, Twitter. I don't know how many people in here are actually on Twitter, but uh, we got a fair following on Twitter uh, that uh, follows us and uh, uh, following uh, we follow. So uh, that you know, we have 341 people that follow our our tweets or twits, whatever they're called. Um, so that's good. As I said, we're still uh, heading out to the, maybe the business community and some other people. But the, uh, I said, we don't have as many uh, as, uh, followers as Kim Kardashian, but uh, we do have some people paying attention to us. And as you can see, we're not doing too bad. That, you know, we're hitting about somewhere between high of 93 to 89 uh, tweets a month, which is, which is good. So we're getting the information out there. Impressions, uh, these are how many times our tweets were actually seen. So uh, people are, are looking at, so we're not, we're not doing too bad. We could do a whole lot better. And, uh, but these are, these are very good. And profile visits, uh, these are people that visit our profile. That means they click to find out more about us. Uh, it, we went up and to go down. I don't really going down, but maybe we hit a uh, top there. But that's not too bad. Okay, that's the end of that. So I need to stop the share. And okay, one second. I got to exit out of my slideshow. Click to exit. There we go. When you go full screen, you lose things. Okay. Now we're going to be talking about online services, that commonly known as OLS. The OLS committee is responsible for ensuring ease and reliable communication between the directors and advisors, as well as with member groups. Uh, OLS oversees the Gmail nonprofit email accounts. So they're the ones responsible setting up all the uh, aliases and stuff that you can uh, email things to and get routed to the right person. Uh, we're also responsible for the uh, Google Share Drive storage and the hosted websites. This year, the 18 hosted websites were moved from a long-time host that was no longer responsive to our communication from us. The websites were moved to GoDaddy. It was a long process, and we thank Francis Chow for overseeing this move. The UCLS User Group Locator Service at ulsapcu.net was also on the same sites as the hosted website and was changed to a ulsapcu.o and moved to GoDaddy. The WordPress website is hosted by a company specializing in website processes. Uh, thank you to Jim Evans for obtaining the certificates and for the website, the ULS programmer for obtaining the SL certificates. So that's the S behind the HTTC, HTTP S. Uh, on our site. So we're actually compliant with the uh, secure server now. Uh, the marketing committee along with the alliances committee 
Uh, these committees, along with the social media committee, work together and look at ways to market APC to protect the member groups and to obtain new sponsors or the organization. If you know anybody that would make a good sponsor, uh, please pass it on to us. Okay, in the absence of David Stewart, uh, uh, Bill, could you please talk about, Bill James, could you talk about the bylaw and policies and procedures committee? Thank you, Mr. President. It is time for the bylaws to be reviewed to determine if there were any changes that needed to be made. If you're interested in being a part of the bylaw review, please let David Stewart know. Our email addresses are the first initial and the last name at apcug.org. David's would be dstewart at apcug.org. Again, if you'd like to be a member of the Policy and Procedures Committee, please let David know. Thank you. Now, Judy Tulor is going to take over everybody's screen for various committee reports. This is where Judy shares her screen and unmutes herself. Okay, we're back to Zoom. She had it and then Okay, Judy, have you unmuted yourself? Where are you? It's, this is interesting. Well, we got your screen. Yeah, I know, but I'm looking for the Zoom thing. I don't have a bar. You're sharing your screen. What do you need? Well, I'm going to find your PowerPoint. I did. I found my PowerPoint, but I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm unmuted already. Yeah, I know. Well, I unmuted you. Oh, well, thank you. Okay, I'm good to go. The Benefits Committee, we are responsible for soliciting ideas for new benefits from you guys. Uh, every couple of years, I send out a survey and ask what you would like in the way of benefits from APCUG. And I usually do not hear any suggestions except we would like insurance. And that's one of the things that we've looked into over the years and we cannot offer insurance to groups. We can't sponsor that. So if you have any benefits that you think your members would like, let us know and we will see if we can make it happen because that's our goal is to develop new benefits for our member groups. Uh, October, November, December last year, Gabe Goldberg brokered a deal with Hard Drive Sentinel and they offered a 40% discount on their uh, lifetime licenses. I took advantage of the program and I really like it. And that was through the Potomac Area Technology and Computer Society, that's his group. We all know user group relations offers a half price discount on True Image and Disk Director. But have you ever taken the time to go to UGR7.com and look at everything else that he offers our groups? A lot of interesting things up there if you are having a holiday uh, raffle or something as a fundraiser, you might check the website because I believe that he will donate product, he and Linda. 
And of course, if you have one of those absolutely fantastic security presentations by Bob G, Avast offers a discount on their paid program. And Sticky Password still gives us a 40% discount on their Pro Password program. The Don Singleton Volunteer of the Year, we all know that there is not one thing we could do with our groups if we did not have volunteers on the user group level, as well as the APCUG level. Uh, we're enthusiastic about technology and dedicated to helping our personal groups. Those of us who are uh, with APCUG are dedicated to make sure APCUG keeps moving right along. And Don was a key member of our leadership team for, oh, a gazillion years. So the VODI was established in his name so groups could recognize the importance of volunteers to APCUG member groups. What we like, and we'll be doing this next year in 2018, the groups nominate one of their volunteers they would like to recognize for the VODI. We have three judges objectively evaluate candidates against the selection criteria. We announce the recipient in January, and hopefully the plaque is awarded at the next meeting of the recipient's uh, user group. So again, November of 2018 is when we will be asking for those great volunteers from you guys. PUSH is one of our most used um, benefits, and the committee is responsible for looking for articles. We look every place and uh, we read, I read, I'm a newsletter junkie, so I read a gazillion newsletters and once every once in a while I will find a really excellent article that hasn't been sent to me by the editor and I will capture it to include in push. Um, our editors are free to use those in their newsletters. Um, some of the absolutely fantastic writers send me their uh, articles directly and I just couldn't do it without them. And we also have columnists and websites that have said, yes, APCUG editors, you may reprint our articles. And each article that I send out has attribution at the top that should be included somewhere in the article. It has the author's name, the name of the user group, uh, and et cetera. And permission to reprint has been given by Ask Bob Rankin. You can read all of, of those easily. Sin Mackley, Tech Whisperer, has taken over World Start. It is no longer around. And many of us use those World Start articles. And so we're so glad that Sin has taken it on. She didn't want it to stop. And to date right now, and I have two more mailings to send out, approximately 142 articles have been sent to your group's editors. Many of you, probably all of you attended the VTC today. We put on four a year. You know, we have two tracks, three 50 minute presentations. And as I say, you can learn about technology in the comfort of your own home, in your bathroom, and your fuzzy slippers. You don't have to go out any place. We upload those videos to APCUG's YouTube channel for groups to use as meetings. And PDFs of the presentations that were given today will be on the website no later than tomorrow. And since 2012, we've been doing this for a while, there's been approximately 145, as Huey says, unique presentations. And in 2016 and 2017 to date, we've had over 6,000 views of our VTC videos. And here's your dates for 2018. And the February 10 VTC has one open space. If there is somebody out there that gives presentations to their groups and wants to ste step up to the next level, get in touch with me. We'd love to get some new people. Today, we had a new person, Joe Melfi. Uh, in February, we're having Phil Sorrentino, and we're having Rick Eaton from si Simon Wiesenthal. He's a friend of mine, and Phil Bach. So in February, we're having three new people, which is way cool as far as I'm concerned. And Jim's not with us today, so I'm going to give his website committee report. And we all hope that you take time to visit our website because you'll find a lot of information for you as a member as well as your club. There's Jerry's Tech Tips, 
the Apple Tech Tips. And uh, I see many groups uh, include these as a link through to them on their websites. They will include them in their newsletters. And we update them uh, several times a week. And if you would like to have something that you would like all the groups to know about, shoot it out to us. Uh, the one that's on the website right now is the CP user group in Pennsylvania, and they hold a held a membership re recruiting event that was very successful, and they wanted to give a shout out to their volunteers, and they were kind enough to send me pictures. The sponsor news is also updated regularly, and this time it was Linda and Jean, our good friends, and it's Jean's latest newsletter that he sends out, and many people don't receive that, so I put it up under sponsor news. And as you know, last month was National Cybersecurity Awareness Month, so we had a logo up there, I had a blurb about we're being champions, and encouraged many of our member groups to become champions, and I was really disappointed because I only found two or three and that was it. And we also always have the upcoming BTC up there, as well as a link on the home page to the last quarterly VTC. Easy access from the home page. About us, you want to know about APCUG, you want to be able to get a hold of us, you're just dying to know our history, check it out on about APCUG. You'll find a list of committees. Take a look at that list. You do not need to be a director or an advisor to be on a committee. Maybe there's something on that list that you'd be interested in participating in. We'd love to have you. There's the list of membership benefits. You can also click on join and renew, easy way to uh, renew your membership. And the membership contest is going to break this month. And we will have a, we'll have three dots that you have the opportunity of winning one of them if you renew by December 31st. And we've already had one group that rejoined last November. So it was way cool, which was just a couple of days ago. And if you're in charge of updating your information in the UGLS and you can't remember the address, it's right there with a click through on locate a user group directly to where you sign in to the UGLS. And if you're interested in analytics, the gal who does the heavy lifting for the website accumulated these for me. I thought it was interesting. And they get enough out of two minutes and 44 seconds of looking at the website, but not too shabby because one minute and 50 seconds is average. Obviously, we are a Windows oriented group. And somebody still has a Windows phone. And of course, Chrome is the browser that accesses our website most of all. And there's several on there that I had no clue what they are until Jim explained it to me. He's also chair of the UGLS. There's in the login screen, you have your name in there, it's first name dot last name. You have your own unique password. And it's called the User Group Locator Service, and it's our database. And we need to have the information updated so the correct people are receiving information about what's happening with APCUG. And I do have to admit, you know, new officers come in, there's board elections, and there's nobody in your group that says, oh boy, we need to update our information in the UGLS. That's probably the last thing that anybody thinks of if they think about it at all. But we really would like you to keep it up to date because sometimes we have people in there who died. We have people who are no longer involved in the group. And I get the emails about that, that please take my name out of there. I'm no longer a member and they're not happy campers. They're still getting stuff from APCUG. And the Los Angeles Computer Society, their APCU rep is Leah Clark, and she is always Johnny on the spot, making sure that their information is up to date. And my policy is the more people you have in the UGLS, the more opportunity we have to get the information to your members and to your board. There's got to be somebody on your list 
that will actually open up and read the emails and say, hey, this is interesting, let's pass this on to our members. Of course, it's nothing that Lee is a friend of mine too, so she knows how to do this. So uh, you can also use the UGLS to find groups in your area. You can sort it on the find a group page by state. You can get to know groups in your area, share presentations. Uh, prospective members and sponsors can ac access your contact information. So that's another reason to keep your information up to date because there is a special place for info and some of those haven't been updated for probably a thousand years. I got an email from a gentleman that said Perth is in Washington. He was looking at the groups in Washington and I thought that's weird. And I looked and yes, Perth was in Washington. And so I let the programmer know and he mailed me back and he said, well, it's in international where it's supposed to be. He wasn't looking where I had given him the SNP. Perth is in WA, Western Australia. That translates to AA, W and A. So they're in Washington. So the programmer's gonna have to figure out how some way in this area to put Perth where it belongs. We have the Speakers Bureau that is one of the three most used benefits. And Speaker, Speakers Bureau is looking for new people to give presentations all the time. So again, you want to step up, join the VTC, give a presentation, or join the Speakers Bureau and say yes or no. You can always say no if you get a request that you really don't want to give a presentation at that particular point in time. And we have 22 topics to choose from mostly from Zoom, some with Skype, and all you need to do is complete the form, all the information, do the math, and send it on its merry way, and you'll be starting on the road to have an interactive webinar for your group. We have a brand new recruit for the Speakers Bureau, and that's Ron Brown. He's giving two-factor authorization in February. He's given Chromebooks are for seniors, and he did Google Photos today. Francis Chow is our more technical one, so instead of listing everything that he gives, you need to go to his list on the Tucson Computer Society website. Bill James is our Android go-to person. John Kennedy is anything Linux and free software. Jerry Minnick is our iDevice guru, plus they all do other things. I'm a generalist, as is David. And almost everybody's had a presentation by Gene Onacronis, but he all does a nifty one on macro photography. He and Linda have been doing that for years, as well as moving to an SSD. And of course, there we have our beloved Bob G, and he's already booking presentation times for his 2018 presentation. Leo Notenboom, ask Leo. All you have to do is go to his website, choose a topic, get in touch, and get a presentation. Huey Poplock does presentations on all kinds of different topics. Rod Shear is the dark side of technology, and he has other topics that you can request. Give him a try. Elliot Stern and Abby Stokes, social media, ergonomics, and NetKey. That's it. I'm back. That's good. Okay. Somebody's still, okay. Um, thank you, Judy, and all that you do for APCUG. Now I'm going to turn this over to Bill James to conduct the elections of its 218 officers that are up for re-election or oh, election. We have an uncontested slate of officers under the title of Director Ray Baxter and Lee Lawner. We have advisors Gabe Goldberg, Jeffrey Heisner, and John Kennedy, Jerry Manick, and Judy Taylor. The floor is open for other nominations. Hearing none, I entertain a motion to accept the candidates by acclamation. 
Uh, this is Francis, and Chao last name is C H A O, and I move that the candidate slate be accepted by acclamation. Is there a second? John Kennedy, East Central Ohio Technology User Club. I will second that motion. All in favor, raise your hands for aye. All opposed, no. Do the same. Okay. You guys all get to vote because you're attending the annual meeting. It's just not the officers. Yeah, but we can't see anybody else's video, so. Let me repeat. All in favor, raise your hands for aye. All opposed? No. Congratulations. Okay. Uh, I believe the ayes have it. Congratulations <laughs> to the 2018 officers. Um, thank you, Bill. And now I'm going to turn this back over to Judy, who will introduce the advisors so they can talk about their regions they represent. We have Sam Wexler from Region 1, which is in the Northeast. Over to you, Sam, for a short report on what's going on with your region. Don't forget to unmute. I did. Thank you. Get that? I unmuted you, Sam. You can talk. Okay. Uh, to start with, I'd like to uh, thank Judy for uh, talking about the Speakers Bureau, which I am chair of, but uh, she did a lot better than I could ever do. Uh, relative to uh, Region 1, it's, uh, I visited, it's, it's the state's uh, New York to Maine, the Northeast, and I'm a snowbird, so I'm there half a year. I'm in Florida, the other half. I actually visited uh, two of the uh, um, groups, the White Plains group and the Danbury group, and I uh, gave them my ideas on what it takes to uh, improve uh, membership, which is a uh, chronic, uh, I guess, chronic il illness throughout all of uh, user group land. Uh, that's, a, that's about it. Okay. Over to John Kennedy, Region 3 and Region 6. Good afternoon. I'm glad to see a number of people from Regions 3 and 6 in attendance today. We cover quite a distance going from Tennessee all the way up to the Great Lakes and then all the way across the uh, Upper Plains where winter has uh, come back, I guess. Uh, our groups are, are pretty either close together or scattered out. Uh, they are doing well uh, with their meetings. Unfortunately, just about every one of them uh, has a newsletter that gets sent to me, so I have quite a number of newsletters to read. Uh, and I read, and they're doing a lot of uh, good activities. The groups are working together fine. They're having social time together, not just deep into technology. And uh, quite a lot of, of uh, information sharing going on with those groups. Uh, unfortunately, due to the distance, I'm not quite in the position to be able to make real-time visits to these groups. So I try to keep communication lines open and always willing to do Zoom, at least we see each other. Um, I have had the fortune that uh, new groups have opened up in both Region 3 and in uh, Region 6 or 6-7. Six, uh, my goal maybe this next year is try to uh, find a group in Indiana. It's the only state in my two regions that doesn't have a single, uh, you know, one group in it. We have a group that's a Kentucky, Indiana, but they meet Kentucky, so it doesn't kind of count. Um, so I'm, I'm very pleased with, with the, uh, what's happening in these groups, and they're, they're thriving. So yay for them. Thank you. Over to Jerry Minnick for Region 5. Thank you, Judy. Region 5. <clears throat> includes Florida, South Carolina, Alabama, and Georgia. Uh, I'm very active with the groups in the uh, region of Florida. Um, we have uh, 
Northwest and a South subgroup, you might say, the FACUG and the NWA, NWFACU. Um, and they're very active with all of the groups that, uh, and clubs that belong to them, user groups that belong to them. I have one user group in Georgia and <clears throat> one in South Carolina. And uh, um, I get information from them on a periodic basis. Uh, I'm probably getting close to 20 different newsletters and information from the groups in Florida. I appreciate uh, staying in touch with them, traveling around and having uh, a good time uh, helping people understand the complexity of the technical world. Thank you. Thanks. Over to Bill James, Region 8. Hi, I'm Bill James and uh, my groups are in Arkansas, Kansas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, which is where I reside, uh, Missouri, Mississippi, and Texas. And uh, I get newsletters from my groups, um, not a whole lot of interaction with them. I constantly plead about sending me information, but a few people do send me, a few groups do send me uh, newsletter articles, which is great. Um, most recently, I had, I, I think I'm going to have an opportunity to have a new club to add to APCUG from this here in the city called Bits and Bites. I just discovered that group by accident and they've been around for about 17 years, which is kind of surprising. Our group, uh, the Computer Club of Oklahoma City, uh, we always thought was the dominant group and we were thought we were the only game in town, but apparently that's not the case as far as uh, groups that uh, are operating uh, independently. We have groups that are associated with other organizations, but none that are just strictly a private uh, uh, stand. -alone. I don't know how to say that really. Uh, they are just uh, a user group that has formed for the benefit of uh, helping people understand technology. Some of the things that we are um, looking at is this, this group is located in a uh, county uh, facility and there's about 20 members. So I will be giving some presentations to them in the, the near future and hopefully we can get them um, become a member of APCUG. I wish I lived, uh, I, even though I'm centrally located, it's not really uh, feasible for me to travel to these various groups, but hopefully I will be able to um, to go to Missouri. I've attended, gone to their, the ICON uh, group uh, in the past, and I'd like to visit them again. Hopefully I can get an invitation. They have a conference once a year that's, uh, that they hold at their local library, and I'm gonna see if I can get on their um, roster to give a presentation. That's all I have. Thank you. I am the current advisor for Region 9, Arizona, 10, California, 11, Washington, Hawaii. I think I need to go to Hawaii and make a presentation and use my uh, travel budget, actually, and International Australian Canada. There are two groups in my area that are in jeopardy of closing due to lack of volunteers and or low attendance. One of the groups has uh, found a slate of officers with only two of the former officers remaining. So they have like four new ones, I think. And that's really nice that they have found some people to step up to the plate. Uh, one of the group presidents in John's uh, region told me that she said she wished that they had put term limits in their bylaws years ago and stagger them. President you know, over this and, you know, staggered with the vice president and thing. And she said that way people wouldn't get the information and, oh, yeah, you know, none of the officers are going to be running for uh, any office this year. We're all tired. So you have to find a completely new slate of officers, which is what has happened to their group. And she said term limits would have been, she thinks, the way to go. So if you're having problems, you know, that way, you might think about term limits and set it up so, you know, you don't lose everybody at the same time. 
Many of my groups have updated their websites. They use WordPress as the one website program of choice. They look absolutely outstanding because so many of them look so horrible. They had not been updated since uh, whatever that Microsoft program was that everybody got free a thousand years ago. Uh, but I would like you to take a look at your website from the eye of a visitor. So many of the websites that I look at, and every once in a while I click on every group in the UGLS and visit your website to see what's going on. And so many of them are so um, into information for the members and not enough information for visitors. And you have to have two or three people that pretend like they haven't got a clue about who you are and see what it is you're missing on your website that might entice somebody to come in. We've had editors retire. They get tired of doing it. They move out of the area. Uh, nobody in the group wants to learn desktop publishing, and I always recommend that they just use whatever word processing program they're familiar with, save it as a PDF, and off they go, because I think it's extremely important that every group has a newsletter to share information. Um, I see lots of groups in my area that are using the Speakers Bureau for presentations. They're using the VTC videos. And that gives the relief to the people who are giving the presentations all of the time. Uh, many of the groups tell me that it's very difficult to drag people up into new technology. They're happy with XP. They're extremely happy with Windows 7. And that flip phone works just fine. And when Windows 7 came up, I had a group of XP people. So at every single meeting, I did something on Windows 7. I'm doing the same thing with 10. And every time there's a new update, I ask my good friend, Bill James, if he will give us a hands-on presentation because he's one of those tester people and knows so much more about it than I do. And I sit there and go, really? Oh, didn't know I could do that. Amazing. And my, that is helping to educate my members. And of course, since I teach tech classes, whenever there's a new operating system out, I need to buy a new computer because I need to have the latest and greatest. At least that's what I tell myself. Some of the groups are taking field trips. One of the groups in Region 1, Westchester, took a field trip to the uh, train museum down in Danbury and they said they're going to be taking them again. We've had groups in California taking field trips for quite a few years uh, to the airport, look at technology and all that good kind of stuff. And they also have lunch and then they upload the information to their Facebook accounts as something different that they do. Um, they also have restaurant nights as fundraisers. It's called passive fundraising. And again, I think that groups that have some social aspect are the groups that stay in business longer than people who only meet once a month and maybe wave to each other as they're in town, but don't have anything social going on. And in all in all, many of my groups are plugging right along just fine, maintaining their membership, gaining a few, losing a couple, but life goes on for them and they seem to be happy campers. That is it. Okay. Oh. Thank you, Judy. Mm -hmm. uh, now comes the time we're going to open it up for general discussion. If you'd like to speak, please unmute yourself and give your name and user uh, group name. But please do it one at a time. And uh, so we can tell it. As I said, Roger, you raised your hand. If you want to unmute yourself, do you have a question? As I tell my kindergartners and tech students, I love questions, so bring it on. Isn't there something you that questions? you're just dying to know about APCUG or something that you'd like us to do? Thank you, Thanks, Pierre. Yes. yes, hi, let me introduce myself. Uh, Pierre D'Armont from the Westchester PC Users Group. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, I am the new president of the Westchester PC Users Group as of June 1st. Uh, prior president, Richie Neyman, passed away in May, unfortunately. Um, I have a couple of questions. Uh, since this is my first attendance to the APC UG annual meeting, uh, they may, I may look like a newbie, but that's okay, I guess. 
Um, is Judy's presentation available for download? Uh, mine will, any, uh, both Kathy's and my uh, will be on the website. There's information about the website on the homepage and I will upload both of theirs before I go to my grandson number three's ice hockey game this afternoon. We do play ice hockey out in California. Okay. All right, very good. Uh, my next question maybe will be answered uh, once I can reread your presentation, but I'll ask anyway. Uh, I saw very briefly that you mentioned Zoom as uh, a vehicle for making presentations. Does that mean, I, as far as I know, Zoom is not free. Does that imply that we can use the uh, APCUG's account to do this, or how does it work? Zoom is free one-on-one. -on -one. When I gave a presentation to Paul's group, Paddock, or Pad Aces, however you pronounce it, um, we they have a, a paid account, but I don't. I just have my one, and it, one on one, it's free. And but this is not one on one. So we're using the APCUG account now, but when I give a webinar, an interactive webinar, I use my Zoom account, and it's between me and the group. That's one on one. I can talk for twenty four hours. What? Is that two participants is free? One to two, it's 40 minutes. At the, I'll tell you, the San Luis Obispo group has their board meeting via Zoom, and they book a 40-minute presentation. They go take a break, and then they come back in and click on another URL for another. Paul Howard is the one should, who should talk and tell us how they use Zoom, because they use it for his group absolutely fantastically. Over to you, Paul. I don't think he knew he was going to speak. Well, he can talk. <laughs> I can talk. I knew that. I guess I ought to get the mic down here, though. Um, well, thank you. Uh, first of all, before I say anything, I want to thank the uh, all the volunteers in APCUG for everything they do for us groups. Uh, I'm involved in two groups, and <clears throat> we take advantage of a you know a lot of the services, and we appreciate them very much. Um, we are using zoom extensively in the potomac area technology and computer society virtually all our board meetings uh the way things have worked out lately have been done via zoom uh, ideally we would be meeting in person to put together newsletters but the newsletter schedule and the meeting schedule haven't worked out <laughs> entirely perfectly so uh anyway um we're using zoom in addition to those meetings uh we meet together with the Ollie Personal Computer User Group. Ollie is the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, in this case at George Mason University. Um, and that organization has a professional video conferencing system in their primary classroom in Fairfax, Virginia. Uh, with the payment of $500 a year to Zoom, you can connect uh, Zoom conferences to professional video conferencing equipment and as a result of that we're able to use professional cameras in that classroom and when we give a presentation we can use Zoom to record the presentations. So we are now capable with what we have that that $500 service to connect to the professional video conferencing equipment and the um, professional service contract which goes for a hundred dollars a year we, when we have a presentation we can conceivably have as many as 99 people uh, participating remotely from the location uh, via zoom so that that has worked out very well for us we have recorded the stuff it's up on our website on our recent meetings page since about September of 2014, I believe, we have recorded all our presentations that we were able to record. In some cases, certain presenters didn't want their stuff recorded. Uh, we probably had, we've had some technical challenges with uh, uh, some devices not, not being particularly compatible. Uh, we've, Ollie has purchased some equipment to work around that, but we haven't had the occasion to work that live yet. So um, 
I'll be happy to, you know, get in touch with uh, Pierre at another time to uh, uh, talk some more about Zoom if he'd like. Yeah. Thank we'll you. Get to you. We'll get to yes. you in a minute, Lloyd. Over to Lloyd. Thank, okay. thank you, Paul. Appreciate it. Unmute. Okay. Um, Judy and I have met. She comes to some of our online meetings. Um, Zoom is the best product in the world. I'm not joking when I say that. It's not just enthusiasm. I did a lot of research. And I belong to two computer clubs. One is Zoom may save us. That's what we're hoping for. But let me first of all start off. The free version is what you try. If you don't like it, that's fine. Try the free version. As Judy said, it's a, if all of the people in your group don't have to subscribe. And you can still run a 40 or 45 minute meeting. That's number one. And then as Judy said, you can take a coffee break and start again. So that's fine. And I think the limit is 50. I, I, Judy could correct me on that um, for the free one. Um, I happen to use it for business and it just works absolutely terrifically uh, for business when I have uh, people from different parts of it, my area where I live and uh, traffic is horrendous in our area. So uh, heavy meetings is fine. But here's the key. You can do almost anything with it. Skype doesn't come close to it. I tried, I had to reconfigure my computer and everything else. But the number one key with Zoom that many people don't even know is that you can record a meeting. So uh, we're gonna be actually having our AGM, which will be very minor for our next meeting because it'll just go through a couple of uh, routine things just that we have to do for administrative purposes. We can record that part of the meeting and uh, that's permanent. And then somebody can go ahead and copy the minutes from the recording. So it's beautiful. Everything is so good that it just makes you wonder. But one of the reasons why it's so good, you can have all kinds of different systems hooked up to Zoom. And that's, that's the greatest thing. Um, we have somebody in a certain part of uh, our greater Toronto area that has a real problem. We call it GTM. It's not that we think we're the greatest, by the way. We just call it the greater Toronto area or the Golden Horseshoe area, uh, Lake Ontario. And um, she has a tremendous amount of commercial activity going in that area. And her, um, her internet connection can be bad, so the sound is bad. So she goes ahead, the video's okay, as she, if she wants. Uh, she can connect by the, by, with us, and she actually connects by phone with a local phone number. So it's like a telephone conference for her. The rest of us can talk all the time. Our biggest problem is, and I, at least you've got it under control, um, we're going to have to do what you're doing when you get this to, to this number of people, and that's to mute everybody until they're ready to speak. <laughs> we have people, and you'll hear something crashing in the kitchen or something like that during our meetings, but it's fun. It's fun. Um, but, but what I was saying is, to me, that it's the openness of the hardware that can connect to it. To me, I, like, I know this gentleman over here is talking about maybe some sophisticated equipment. But uh, one of the things I'd recommend, and let me just get the actual code. You don't need headphones for this. This is a tremendous product. I don't know if you can see this or not, but it's the Logitech C920. And it does everything. You don't need an extra, um, you don't need an extra set of headphones. You don't need an extra microphone. You're wearing, this stuff is pretty good. It focuses right in on the speaker. Uh, I've got blue lights here that show me that, for example, uh, I'm on and you're on and I can see that we're on. And also, you know, just in case, if I happen to have this on, I know that somebody's not spying on me. Let's say I've turned it off, but all of a sudden it goes blue. Well, then I know somebody's spying on me if I didn't do it myself. But like I said, the biggest and most important thing is flexibility, compatibility with other equipment, and something that Skype doesn't do or it's not supposed to do, I got it to do it is the fact that when you share your screen, you can share the sound. And what's even greater is that I can have the video running and I can over speak, over speak over it and actually make a comment. So if I see somebody say, you see that sky over there, that's blue over here and a gray over here, we can actually do things, all kinds of things. Um, so anyways, I'll give it back to Judy, uh, but the, you know, it is a tremendous product and try it, you'll like it. Believe me, you will. Thank you. We, we record everything. This meeting is being recorded. You heard that from the beginning. When I give a presentation to PADX, I 
recorded that presentation. I want to just quickly ask John, how much does your group pay for a license? We, we jumped on at the beginning, so I think we pay 100 a year. Yeah, so Pierre, now, that's what you would get. Yeah, and we make it cost-effective because we used to, and we may go back to it, our executive board meets using Zoom so that we don't have to all drive in and you know get together and then waste time that way. Uh, so we are able to reach out to – you know, people who can't come into our computer meetings uh, and record if we want. So it's it's just, well, you know, I can't talk because I run this. For us. <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's enamored of it. Yeah. And for that $100, you can have 100 people? Unlimited. It's 100. It's 100. So that, that's. I'm trying to remember if it's the 100, it only goes 100. with the webinar. Yeah, so Pierre, that's what you're interested in, and you can use it like this. This is what we use for our board meeting, or your group probably hasn't had a webinar, but it works the same way, except it's one-on-one, -on -one and you can't see us, so we can be in our bathrobes and fuzzy slippers giving the presentation. Over to Bob G. Thank you. On, on mute. He's working on it. Okay, I can, everybody always goes like this. <laughs> You got to get the mouse to work. Lower left hand corner. I just did it. Okay, I did it. He did it. We go. There you go. Okay. I purchased the license in the end of September because I had all those presentations scheduled for October, and it was one forty nine ninety five for a year, and that gives you up to a hundred connections without a time limit. Uh, you can do your own recordings, all of that stuff. I used to use uh, Skype, and like everybody else said, there's no comparison. If you have a club that has a little problem with internet access and you try to use Skype, you're going to spend three and a half hours doing a one-hour presentation. If you're using Zoom, I had no problems except for clubs not doing what they should have done. Okay, I had some clubs that hadn't used the computer in eons, so they wound up all of a sudden with Microsoft doing a reboot when we got started <laughs> because they had done an update in the background. It was time to reboot, and the system just rebooted. So, but those are the kinds of little funny things that happen. Outside of that, uh, I'm very, very, very happy. Uh, the free one gives you 40 minutes is what it says. You can go a little longer, but you get 40 minutes, and yeah, you can go ahead, do 40 minutes, and then do another 40 minutes if you want to go free. Since I was going to do all those presentations in October, I said, hey, I've asked, I need this. Otherwise, I can't do webinars. And that's what we did. So for the next year, at least, I have the one where I can have up to 100 connections. Now, each connection, how many they have in their audience, uh, it doesn't say, you know, you can only have one person in the audience because when I connect to a club, I'm connecting to one person who projects it to a screen and they have a whole audience there. So, and it's almost like doing it live. If you're sharing your uh, video at the same time, you get to see the club. If they turn the computer the right way, it's facing the audience. It's almost like being there. That's all I have. Thanks. And the one thing I'm going to say is I think with Paul's group, uh, they, if they have people who go to Hawaii and they can broadcast to them, you know, when they go on vacation or if it's too snowy for people to come in or they're too old to drive anymore, you could pay that $149 and they can still keep attending your meeting. No, I don't live in Ohio, but I belong to their club. So I get to see and all of their meetings. Yeah. That's one of the benefits I have. Any other questions from anybody? The, the 149, that's per year or is that? That's per year. year. It's per year, okay. And that's all you need to spend. Right. I use my little laptop and my projectors, HDMI, and we're happy campers. I've got this. I, I, let me interrupt. I've got their pricing schedule right here in front of me. Even for the free version, you're allowed up to 100 participants. 
And for the first, the one with fourteen ninety nine a month, which I believe in, a, I, I haven't drilled down, but if you pay for the 12 months in advance, I think it's a little cheaper. Yeah. Uh, um, so that's 100. And those are the two basics. Now, if you're going to have more than 100 participants, uh, you know, you must have a pretty big crowd. Yeah. So you might want to have one or two more hosts uh, just in case. But you need one, like for, to have it unlimited length. And ours can go into three o'clock in the morning, our time, if we get carried away sometimes. Um, but if you set the time in Zoom and say, oh, it's going to be a three hour meeting. You can go beyond that if you've got the, the minimum paid version. And that's amazing. Like I said, I, I just fell in love with the thing when the first time I started working with it. And it gets better each time because they make more and more accommodations for you. Um, one of the things that I don't know if you know this or not, you know how uh, you see people with a nice big backdrop. They're in, a, they're in Hawaii when in fact they're not. They can have a picture of Hawaii behind them. Meanwhile, they could be sitting on the toilet as far as I'm concerned. But they've got this setup now that you can do that. They also have another feature for some of us that are a little uh, long in the tooth that um, you can soften your facial features so the camera doesn't make it, you look so rough and tough. Anyways, that's it. Okay. So I've reconvinced you, Pierre, <laughs> that it's something you want to look at, hopefully. I'm, I'm sold. Thank you. We have we pay two hundred bucks a year. We that's how we have our two tracks. We can have a hundred people on each track. That we could have had a hundred people today in tiny little squares. That sounds and perfect. I think the I think my group can afford a hundred dollars a year. Yeah. yeah, looking at your uh huh your treasurer's report. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the one thing I do want to say is Huey and Jim Evans and I got in on the ground floor working with Zoom when they first started. Jim read about it in the Wall Street Journal and got in touch and said, hey, here we are. This is what we need. Uh, we want to do these conferences. And they said, fine, come on. And as they went, by the time we decided it was mature enough for us to use, my contact was the only one that was left. Both Huey's on the East Coast, Florida, and uh, Jim's in Ohio. My California connection was the only one left. And really, we really had a good time you know, shooting ideas from an organization and what we would knew, uh, need. And it was put together by some young kids that left Oracle and they wanted to come up with something that was better than what Oracle was using. And they founded Zoom and are probably making money hand over fist. <laughs> Any more questions? Any more questions? Any more discussion? And please, we love questions. Burning questions that you've always wanted to know about APCUG, Paul. You have to unmute yourself to ask the question. I keep pushing the mute on the picture instead of in the left-hand <laughs> corner. Uh, I've sent private messages to both Pierre and Lloyd. I would appreciate if they would get in touch with me. Uh, go to the chat box. My email address is there. Uh, thanks very much. Thank you. Okay. I would like to introduce our new newest advisor, and he is from the PC user group in Connecticut. Jeff Heisner, please tell us about yourself. Uh, thank you, Judy. Uh, can everyone hear me, I hope? Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, great. Well, first of all, let me just, I'll give you a brief history. I've been in IT since 1963 when I graduated high school. That's all I know, unlike a lot of people come in and out. That's number one. Uh, recently, with the Trumbull Group in Connecticut, I served as the secretary and newsletter and website support. Uh, I'm not the primary person there, but uh, I do participate. Uh, as far as problem solving, things like this, I've been in emergency management since uh, 1986, as well as an IT disaster recovery person uh, since that time. And then in 1990, uh, I added on to my credentials, uh, information security practitioner, of which I got out when I started looking at corporate America. And they said, the first person they let go was the chief information security officer. 
So I said, nope, that's not for me. So uh, basically what I'm hoping to do, and I've been working with our president, is strengthening the organization. And I'll be happy to share this document with you. I did it uh, when I was a member with the uh, Association for Contingency Planners uh, in, in advising and helping them strengthen their areas of responsibility, looking and identifying areas that were critical to the success of the group uh, and uh, enhancing and implementing programs as well as looking at their uh, policies and procedures. So basically, that's me. My some of my on a, on a side note, uh, what do I enjoy? Uh, basically, um, I uh, love fishing. I am a model railroader in HO gauge, uh, and uh, that's pretty much it. I have two grandkids that I love dearly, a wonderful wife, and uh, things are good. Uh, on the last thing, just I just as a group. Uh, to let you know. I've also worked with the Capital Region. I'm uh, here in Connecticut uh, as a representative for people with disabilities uh, during disaster and other critical events. Uh, I'm also an uh, uh, what's the word? A uh, advocate for people with disabilities. I work with OSHA and ADA in setting up a lot of the process and procedures in the past. I have published uh, various articles on life safety, uh, occupational health and safety uh, information with OSHA and American Disabilities, and uh, also needless to say, my fishing. So that that's basically me. Outstanding. Thank you so much. And for me, the president of his group, John Roy, is down in my lower right-hand corner, and he's one of my buddies. Whenever I send John an email, he is one of the few people who gets right back to me. And you guys don't know how much I appreciate that. Uh, any other questions? Any other questions? Any other oh, discussion? I have one more thing to say to Pierre. Clint Tinsley is on the meeting with his iPad. You can also use your... Uh, Android or your iPhone to participate in Zoom. We don't see you, but you can see us and we can hear, okay? Oh, they can turn oh, on the picture with the, the Android device. Oh, okay, but no, oh, well, but most of our people are using iDevices and we never see them. Well, that's because they don't turn on the picture. That's not nice. I know. And it's not nice that you, you, keep you got a front face camera, you can do They've it. got their bathrobes and fuzzy slippers on and don't want us yeah. to know. Okay, hearing no other discussion, hearing no other discussion. Okay, I, I will in now entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. If no one has anything. Well, I'm 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 sure that we adjourn this meeting. Uh, for Francis Chow of the Tucson Computer Society. Okay. I'll second it, Bob Gustisha. Okay, so the annual meeting is adjourned at well, well 4 32 central time on november the 4th thank did you, you so much john? for participating john did you want to say something judy wanted to say something no i said thank you for participating i wish I, that all the rest of the people would show themselves so i could see what they all look like but that's yeah. okay and this will be uploaded to the youtube channel and um oh, well, Okay, and I want to thank everybody that was involved in the, both the process and thank for Judy for putting this together. And if I ever run for election to public office, she's going to be my speechwriter. <laughs> <laughs> thank right. you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. So, <clears throat> I'm going to end the meeting. So, so long, everybody. everybody can leave as soon as I get down there. Bye. I look forward to working with everybody. Thank you.